Chapter 2.2 Organizing Graphing Quantitative Data Class For quantitative data, an interval that includes all the values that fall within two numbers, the lower and the upper limits. A lower limit is the smallest value in the class. An upper limit is the largest limit in the class. A frequency distribution for quantitative data a frequency distribution for quantitative data lists all the classes and the number of values that belong to each class. Data presented in the form of a frequency distribution are called grouped data. A class boundary is given by the midpoint of the upper limit of one class and the lower limit of the next class. A class width is the difference between the two boundaries of a class width or size. Although it is not uncommon to have classes of different sizes, most of the time it is preferable to have the same width for all classes. The, to determine the classes are the same size, first find a difference between the largest and the smallest values in the data. Then the approximate width of a class is obtained by dividing this difference by the number of desired classes. Here is an example of a calculation of, of class width. Approximate class width equals largest minus smallest values divided by the number of classes. Class midpoint, or mark, is obtained by dividing the sum of the two limits or the two boundaries of a class by two. For example, You'll notice there's class limits of 801 to 1000. And then you have the class boundaries from 800.5 to less than 1000.5. The class width of 200, the class midpoint of 900.5. To the right, you can notice an example of the midpoint of the first class. You have 801 plus 1000 divided by 2 equals a class midpoint of 900.5. A histogram is a graph in which classes are marked on the horizontal axis and the frequencies, relative frequencies, or percentages are marked on the vertical axis. The frequencies, relative frequencies, or percentages are, for, are represented by the heights of the bars. In a histogram, the bars are drawn adjacent to each other. A polygon is another device that can be used to present quantitative data in a graphic form. To draw a frequency polygon, we first mark a dot above the midpoint of each class at a height equal to the frequency of that class. A polygon is formed by joining the midpoints of the tops of successive bars in a histogram with straight lines. The number of classes. Usually the number of classes for, for a frequency distribution table varies from 5 to 20, depending mainly on the number of observations in the data set. It is preferable to have more classes as the size of a data set increases. The decision about the number of classes is arbitrarily made by the data organizer. One rule to help decide on the number of classes is Surge's formula. C equals 1 plus 3.3 log n. Here's a couple of notes to keep in mind. Usually the approximate class width is rounded to a convenient number, which is then used as the class width. Note that rounding this number may slightly change the number of classes initially intended. Also, a way to understand a formula where C is the number of classes and the n is the number of observations in the data set. The value of log n can be obtained by using a calculator or a graphing calculator would be more preferred. The lower limit of the first class, any convenient number that is equal to or less than the smallest value in the data set can be used as a lower limit of the first class. A frequency distribution table, but the following data gives a total number of iPods sold by a mail order company on each of 30 days. Construct a frequency distribution table. So below, I have constructed a sample table. We have a set of numbers. 
the solution in these data minimum value is 5 and the maximum value is 29. Suppose we decide to group this data using five classes of equal width. Then you have approximate width of each class, 29 minus 5 divided by 5 equals 4.8. Now to calculate the relative frequency and percentage, you have the relative frequency of class equaling frequency of that class divided by the sum of all frequencies equals f divided by the sum of f. A percentage equals relative frequency multiplied by 100%. Histograms can assume any one large number of shapes. Most common of these shapes are symmetric, skewed, and uniform. A symmetric histogram is identical on both sides of its central point. A skewed histogram is non-symmetric for a skewed histogram. The tail on one side is longer than the tail on the other. A skewed to the right histogram has a longer tail on the right side. A skewed to the left histogram has a longer tail on the left side. A uniform histogram or rectangular histogram has the same frequency for each class. Fooling the reader. Describing data using graphs gives us insights into the main characteristics of the data, but graphs unfortunately can also be used to intentionally or unintentionally to distort the facts and deceive the reader. The following are two ways to manipulate graphs to convey a particular opinion or impression. You can change the scale, either on one or on both axes, that is, shortening or stretching one or both of the axes or truncating the frequency of axis, that is, starting the frequency axis at a number greater than zero. Something to keep in mind, when interpreting a graph, we should be very cautious. We should observe carefully whether the frequency axis has been truncated or whether any axis has been unnecessarily shortened or stretched.